displays data in colorful charts and graphs and gauges and even a dashboard format. And you shared how to email reports and even schedule the delivery of reports. And you said that this time you would dive into more complex features. And so all of you, if you have questions, put them in the chat box and I'm going to turn things over to Matthew. Yeah, you're stealing my recap thunder, but that's okay. We're going to storm through a bunch of other things today. Um, yeah, this entire webinar series, we don't have time to show everything the report wizard can do, but uh, I'm trying to highlight the, uh, I think the the bigger features, the more useful features in the system. So uh, let's uh, get past the other sessions here. So first thing I'm going to show is a cross tab report. And this, uh, so I've been working with uh, examples of doing uh, enrollments and uh, especially by subject and, and by date. So I'm gonna kind of keep with that theme here in, in doing a cross tab. So uh, cross tabulation, if, if you've ever used a pivot table in Excel, that's, what I mean by cross tab, it's it's a looking at two items of of um, two elements of data, two fields, and seeing the numbers by those two elements. So uh, subject code um, by date, you know, something like that. Um, anyway, let's let's see one, and and I think you'll you'll know what I mean. Uh, so it's new, let's do um, course enrollment by subject and date. Okay, next. Uh, so this we're going out of the course table again. Um, need, well, let's see, begin date is somewhere up here do that one um, so this you need the three fields the two the two ranges and then your data so in my case the enrollment count and then let's get down here to subject uh, next and sometimes the report wizard is able to figure out which you're you're wanting to do especially with the data uh, I think it's it's uh, because I have begin date and enrollment date. It doesn't know which I want to see as the data, um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, I thought would be fairly obvious, but it it wasn't to it. So uh, begin date. Let's see. Do I want begin date as the columns or do I want it as rows? Actually, it probably doesn't matter, but I'm going to do columns because I think I have fewer subject codes. So I want that down the left side of the page and more begin dates. Yeah, well, I mean, it's whichever way you want to think about it. But um, yeah, I'm going to do that um, for now. Oh, wait, need to come back here with the begin date. And like we did last time in doing the month year, otherwise it's gonna show me every single begin date that I have in my demo as separate columns. Uh, we don't want that. We want um, um, want it to accumulate by month date. Uh, I could put a filter on here if I want to, but um, um, I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm just gonna pull up everything in the demo. Might as well preview everything. So here I've got my subject codes going down the middle. And then, so the none, so this is the courses without a begin date. And then the none here is the courses without a subject code. And so then it's showing me by month, how many enrollments. Uh, so this is total across all of the subjects. A lot of these down here aren't used too much in the demo. I think computer is used pretty often. Aceware is probably the bigger, uh, bigger one in the system. Uh, but also at the bottom, it's tabulating each column and gives you a total there. Uh, page three, if I go to the end of the months here, 
clear to the right, it's going to show me for each subject code totals for that. So it's it's um, a good way to show totals, but also breakdown of those totals um, across the other features. Of course, you could do cross tab analysis for you know all your different statistics, gender, um, uh, tracking code would be a good one. Um, yeah, all all the different demographics in on the name screen for sure uh, can be used. Uh, you don't have to go across dates. Maybe you want to do um, well. You could do subject code across the top and then gender down the side. You know, you, the the possibilities here are well not limitless because you're limited to the data in your system. But um, yeah, whatever you're tracking. Uh, you can get this uh, to do it. And of course, with the, the formatting step, uh, like we've seen with the others, I just ran off the standard template um, to begin with. Uh, you could pull you know, something like the modern template and give it a little bit nicer with the uh, uh, alternating rows, a different color, a nice blue top, up here, you know, and just kind of prettify it a little bit. And I mean, you're not spending a huge amount of time just to give it a little bit of, of uh, you know, niceness to it. So that's also a good deal. And of course, um, so if you do want, maybe you only want to see a year, you know, with the charts, we could say, you know, give me, give me only, you know, X number of of points per page uh, here you can't do that there is you can format or um, under the display rotate column headings and that shrinks everything together um, but with dates it's kind of smushing them on top of each other so it becomes unreadable up here for for dates at least if you were doing subject code that uh, might be a little bit better but it does make your points then come together um heck let's try it let's do subject code and um, begin date reverse oh come on gotta put that over there okay begin date and make sure my um, format as month, year, yes. And make the subject code rotate. Preview, see how this looks. Yep, again, it scrunched it. And I think part of it is because I'm using the modern template. Uh, I can go in there, you know, uh, modify the template a bit uh and and change that around but um or uh be able to widen that uh, but yeah i'm not going to go into that detail at the moment but yeah it just kind of flipped things on its side everything's on one page though that's kind of cool everything from january 2020 through july 2022 um otherwise you would be wanting to do a query um i'm not going to rotate see how it looks without rotating i'm not um you could do a query if you wanted to just see one year um in this cross tab analysis uh so with the subject codes now not rotated that uh makes the columns back wider again and gives us multiple pages again uh with the subject codes going across the top so uh, i'm gonna finish that so that was quick uh quick look at cross tab i i think it's really useful for quite a bit of stuff so uh feel free to play with that uh the next thing i wanted to ch show real quick was mailing labels and doing this for a couple of reasons but let's do uh what do i want to call this oh i don't know um all names maybe i'm doing a mailing oh I've already got a report with that. Uh, webinar 2021. 
Uh, so I want to do a mailing uh, to everybody in my database uh, and and um, yeah, show this. Um, so this time we're going to go down to names to pull our information from. Um, and we could, let's see, first name, first name, uh, what else do we need? We need last name, uh, let's see, address is going to be clear at the top, line one, let's do line two as well, uh, city, doo -doo -doo. state, zip. All right, let's preview this. And that doesn't look like a mailing label. For one thing, it's put my all those fields on separate lines rather than you know putting first and last name on the same line. So this is an example of where we're going to need a formula. Uh, I've actually I've already got a full name formula in here, but I'm not going to use that. I'm going to pretend I don't even have that. Uh, so get rid of first name, last name, and let's add a new formula here. So we're going to call this uh, name just because full name is already used, and I don't want to call this full name number two or something. So uh, you can start typing field names in here on the fly, but that's not as easy. To make it easy, hit the dot, dot, dot here for the expression builder. It's got all sorts of built-in functions. Uh, all trim is a good one, definitely, if you want to trim the extra spaces. Because in your database, um, for those of you that are using the classic Fox Pro tables, it keeps each column a fixed width. Um, so you're gonna have uh first name is 35 characters i think it's 35 anyway however many characters so it's going to keep that all together so we don't want that so let's do uh first first not firm first first name here in this all trim to get it down to just be the the width of the name uh in in building expressions with characters you have to concatenate them with a plus symbol this is exactly like in student manager report writing so plus um, i do want a space in between the first name and last name plus let's insert another all trim and find our last name all right okay it asks if you want to test it Yes, just to get a a a well feel good message of this expression is valid. If you want to actually see what it's generating with your formula, hit the preview. So it's taking in the first name, the last name, which in the database is nm name one, nm name three, and creating this result: Kevin Cosner, Charles Havlicek, so on and so forth. So exactly what I'm looking for. Of course, I've practiced this a few dozen times. So uh, also it's given a width here. This is kind of a max width. Um, and really it's 35 characters is NM name one, 40 characters for NM name three, plus an extra character for the space. So that's how it determines 76 for us. You can lower that or, well, you're, no reason to up it but you can lower it if you do want to you know make sure your columns your name column is is much skinnier but um for mailing labels this works great oh uh, also i probably didn't need to all trim nm name three uh because it's at the end those end spaces at the end wouldn't have mattered but uh, you be consistent and you know just kind of keep remembering the all trim remove spaces so keep it nice and tidy um, 
All right, so let's put this at the bottom. I can move this now up to the top and preview that. So now we've got name on one line. Now we need to do something similar with uh, city, state, and zip to format it for a mailing label. So I'm going to get rid of city, state, zip, and let's add a new formula. Um, um, I don't know, city, I think I've got city, let's abbreviate city, state, zip. And formula is going to be, oh, let's hit the all, uh, get into here, get that all trim going again. And now we go down to city, double click to add it in. Plus, now we need a comma after the city. So add quote, comma, space, quote. So we're concatenating both the comma and the space in behind. Um, in the database, state is always two characters. So don't need to all trim it at all. Um, although if we had international, they don't have states so that maybe you do want to all trim for that but um yeah we probably need to do some funky if statement if you wanted to do um international as well as as national states um so between the state and the zip is just a space so we need to concatenate a space and add our zip um, do you want to test? Yes. Now, notice zip codes are usually numeric. However, in in the student manager world in the database, we've set it to be alphanumeric because, well, you've, for one thing, the hyphen, if you've got the, the five hyphen four digit code, in stored in there um, need to address that also international zips can have letters in it so that's why we just made it a character otherwise we would have to convert this to a uh, string when you're concatenating the formula so let's preview this hollywood california nine eight nine trip nine nine triple eight uh, gets this result. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, so close that. And yeah, we want that at the end. So preview this. Okay, so we've got names going on here. Uh, and this looks like, and, and notice, so Kevin Costner has an address one and an address two. Uh, so it's showing both. Charles Havlicek does not have an address two. It's just skip that line and move that city uh, state zip line right up next to that other stuff. So it does some formatting things for us. Uh, the report wizard is doing this for us. Uh, here's another example. Newt Gingrich has a, a PO box in the line two and a, a care of in, in line one. So um, yeah, we got that going for us but look at the odd spacing it's like it's putting on a, well not three by five cards but huge spacing uh so we can fix that next come on uh filter oh, i'm going to come back to filter um sorting i don't know if you care but if this is a mass you know you're mailing everybody the same uh marketing material uh you probably don't need to worry about a sort, but um, we can talk about sort here in a second. Okay, so address. Um, this allows you to choose basically every single Avery known to man. I've only ran into once where an Avery wasn't available and I was able to email Stonefield and and within a day they had me a new um uh new version of the report wizard 
that had that missing Avery programmed in. So if you've come across a, a Avery that isn't in here, there's even some Dymos in here too. Um, yeah, if there's something in here that you need, let me know, I can get it added. Um, may not be that same one day turnaround time, but yeah, we can add it pretty quick. Um, and let's see, what do I wanna do? I wanna do, what's a fairly standard? Oh, no, two across, let's do a three across. Two and five six, yeah, one inch high, two and five six wide, three across. So there we go. Um, so this has put it now into the page size of this particular Avery, and we can now print this um, onto those Avery sheets without an issue. Roll down to see the bottom of the page, but yeah. So it's now put well, and it's chopped our our report down to two pages because well, I've only got you know seventy names or whatever in in the database, but um, but yeah, that's showing that. Now I was going to talk about sort order. The post office usually likes mass the the bulk mailings to be in zip code order. So I'm going to add the zip code field because the zip code right now is in this formula. Um, so I can't I can't uh, order by this whole formula because then it would be in city name order. I need it in zip code format. And if I come in here, um, display this field on the report. I don't want it to show on the report. I want it to be a field available for the sort order. See, so now it's the same exact look, except everything's in zip code order. Well, this person doesn't even have a zip code listed or a state, but you see 01, 092, so on and so forth going through the one, you know. Yeah, it's it's now in our zip code format. So if you are wanting to order by something not but not show it on the report, you can do that. And this is any report, not just the uh the name or the um, mailing labels report. Any report in the system you could do this with. Um so I wanted to show that there's several things I'm I'm showing you know I'm showing formulas for the first time using name name labels but those can be in any report um, you know the charts the graphs uh, those can be formulas you you can do that stuff with the cross tabs you can have formulas in um, all sorts of stuff uh, the other thing though I want to cover real quick. So I have no filter on here. This is giving me every single name. The thing is, names, I'm gonna pull this up first. Don't mail flag. You don't want to mail people who have said, don't mail me. So make sure that the don't mail is set to no on your at, at the very least, on your mailings. Um, yeah, otherwise you're violating can spam or uh, or uh, it's can spam's email, but the other one that's uh, uh, do not solicit or whatever solicitation laws. Of course, that varies by state. Well, yeah. Anyway, follow your follow the rules uh, as best as you can. Uh, so I think, yeah. Oh, and I didn't really show, but it was on the screen. So if you've got an Avery where, yeah, this isn't quite right, uh, maybe something in here, your sheets were slightly different or something, you can manually adjust the width, the height, uh, the left margin, the bottom margin, column spacing, 
uh, and even the top margin, all, all that stuff you can manually adjust. Um, it does leave it the same Avery number, although it's not, no longer really that Avery, but notice it chopped down a little bit up here at the top when I adjusted the top margin. So you can play with that a little bit and, and do things like that. If you really need to, you can go into the advanced layout and adjust uh, some things manually there. But, you know, I mean, other than maybe if you want to put in a logo or something on, on your mailing labels, but I wouldn't think uh, that's usually, you know, putting it on your nice return label, but you're not going to print out of the report wizard. That's you're probably getting those uh, done by a, a mail house or something. Um, so, yeah, I've kind of gone through several things there pretty quick. Uh, Sharon, do we have any questions at the moment? You're good. Keep continue on. Great. OK, so formulas. OK, so and also with formulas. Uh, you can define your formulas or look at previously uh, created formulas because once you've created a formula, it's available. Um, so I was I said I had full name in here before. Well, I've got three copies of full name, um, except I'm using the namer function. Let me let's edit this. So this is using the namer function out of student manager and using the SSN ID field passed into it. Um, so one of the things with formulas is you can use like 90% of the functions available to you in student manager. Um, why 90%? There's like, you know, the specialty functions, just do it just after mass email, mass, uh, uh, you know, the merge mail, mass receipt, things like that. You're not going to be able to do out of the report wizard. Um, but your basic, well, not really basic. I mean, any, any calculations, any, you know, like the namer function, it pulls together, so this has middle initial and suffix uh, added in uh, with with just a regular namer. Uh, I think I've got, so this one down here is namer, but with, with a two as a second parameter. Let's preview that. Um, so that puts it last name first, comma, first name, and your your suffix is still on here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's whatever order you're wanting to do it in, you can, yeah, that's the different options. Look at the help guide and follow the rules there. Um, again, you can hit the dot, 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 and it puts in SSN ID, uh, rather than the, the actual field name, uh, in student manager. So. Uh, you could do things like that. Now here, though, when you're using a formula, it's not going to know width. Notice, oh, I hit the wrong button. Ah, preview. Um, Charles W. It should have two ones at the end. Butterfield Co Coversian, comma. We don't see a first name here. It's missing. That's, I think that's missing. Yeah, it's chopped it off. So 22 characters is not enough. Uh, so when you're you're doing formulas like this, you do need to pay attention to the width. Now, if I preview, Paul now shows up. The both uh, the two uh, Roman numeral two is now showing next to Charles W. Um, yeah, you've got more space now in in these fields or in this field. Uh, the other one I wanted to show real quick, the other full name, T Namer. So these others, if I go back in here, these are coming out of the names table. T Namer, edit, is coming out of the instructor table. It shows you instructor names. And 
different variable, INID. Um, uh, oh, so it didn't convert it from in from over here. But um, if I preview that, so that's showing you the, um, why I have a blank instructor. Okay, that's bad data. But anyway, looking at these others, this is pulling in um, the names then of just the instructors. That's why you've got these funky 888 numbers for most of these. Although Chuck's number one, he's got to be 1111. Jason apparently is number two. So, okay, so you got um, that differentiation uh, as well. So that's, yeah, pay attention to what table it is uh, when you're creating these formulas. Now, if you're noticed when we did, yeah, let's get back into my all names. Okay, home edit. Uh, when I created these formulas, it automatically associated it with the names table because I had the names table selected up here. So that, you know, if you're doing a, ah, not parent, how about registrations? Doing a registration formula, um, and you can see there's some that's already in here. Um, yeah, ooh, do, do is a good one. Let's look at this one. Uh, wow, okay, that's not what I expected to see. How about do here? There we go. GTDo is coming from then from uh, student manager function and well, it's calculating the do for a registration. So there's do on registrations and paid. There's a paid formula already in here, but um, and it's just it should be using GT paid. Yep, GT paid. But also course, courses can have due and paid. Course, do, 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 do. Oh, I don't have a due set up. Maybe I have a paid somewhere. Nope. So that uses a completely different function though for the course due and paid. Um, it makes no sense to put it in here. So let me, um, let me go back to a formula. So let's add a new one in the course table, and this is going to be paid. Uh, it's only going to complain if you have the same name in the same table. Uh, so I can have a paid on register and a paid on course. They're two different things, according to the report wizard. Um, so the formula here, um, um, anybody know off the top of their head? You all know, right? Okay, so this is where you would go to a, ah, a swear, I can't type, a swear.com, SM help. And you get the new help guide and search course, do or no we're doing paid paid course paid give it a second mouse wheel goes around and around gt co-paid this looks interesting great returns the total paid for the course excluding billings yes that's exactly what i want so i've copied it directly from the help guide pasted it directly into the formula editor here. Tab, yes, calculation expression is valid, great. It's figured out that it's a numeric, it's given it a width and a decimal place. I must have some courses that really are, uh, have a lot of money in them or something. Um, you can have, Display zero as a blank. That's probably a good thing. Dollar sign. Yeah, we're talking money here. So let's put in in um, dollar signs. If you do the negative values or parentheses, you could do that. Otherwise, it's just going to have a negative symbol at the front. Uh, you can go down into this custom format and mess with this stuff. Probably don't need 13 digits. I'm going to 
knock this down. Um, 900, yeah, that's still 999 million. Um, I'm going to put this under a million. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's preview that. Let's see. So we got different courses here and how much has actually been paid in each of these courses. Of course, this is demo data. There's some of these courses that have nothing in it or they're free courses or something, you know, and we're looking at, yeah, some of the, okay, so this has $1,400 in it. So yeah, you can, you can uh, notice it did not put in the, a lot of that formatting stuff into the preview, but if you add this to a report, it's, it's going to automatically uh, put that stuff in for you. So any questions about creating formulas? Giving them a second here. That not great. Okay, so ah, okay. Let's get out of here. Great. Um, of course, looking at my notes here. Okay, so what if I want to change? Uh, course enrollment. I'm going to copy this time. Copy this report. And this time, course paid by subject. I would put in a one at the end. Um, all right, edit. Get rid of that one. I don't, don't want that one. Okay, so now instead of enrollment, I'm going to put in paid. Do, 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 do. Paid added. Next. Drop it into the data. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to reverse this back. Put the begin date across the top. And let's just get this to course. Begin date. Actually, let's do course um, course code. Uh, begins with twenty one. Yeah. All right. So do that real quick. Preview that. And so here, so it's dropped out all those zeros. It's only showing me what has amounts and it's showing, oh, I still have it flipped sideways and it's actually not running over top of each other. Yay, I actually like that. Um, I had an, I, when I was practicing the other day, I left it straight. So I, this is new, this is, hey, it's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, it's kind of gotten it a little tighter because I've got this flipped sideways. And we've got, yeah, totals at the end for each subject code, totals at the bottom for each month. Um, so yeah, this is probably something you definitely want to see. So date of none is going to be online courses. Those don't have a, a begin date. Um, now, what if we don't want to see begin date? Actually, I'm just going to come over here, get rid of it. And instead, I want to see registration date. So most of the examples I've been showing have been everything's in one table. So let's do add date. It does not matter here what order they're in. But yeah, so you could put that here. Properties, let's do the month, year thing again. Rotate column headings because, hey, apparently that works with this data. And let's preview that. So now I'm going off of the registration ad date. What's coming in? It's actually dropped some of my subject codes. Apparently I don't have as many subject codes used in the, the these courses than I did the others. Notice it, it's now 
come back to June 20, June 20, yeah, June 2020, August 2020, because uh, apparently I've got, well, I don't see any. Well, it, there might be a registration in there, but it's a $0 registration. So you see uh, Spurious, well, not really Spurious, you, you're, even though my my query was for course code begins with 21, I've got back in 2020 because people were registering for 2021 courses before 2021. So it's now showing me by registration date, when are these registrations coming in? I've got um, quite a bit coming in November, December, uh, April, it's another fairly higher month, um, June 2021, August and September. Uh, so notice it's August. No. Oh, I've got August 2029. I wonder if something got messed up in my data as to why I'm seeing that. But yeah, so you could see some things. So ACLS, these courses must all be free. That's why I'm getting it. Uh, same thing with science. That's why I'm getting those that row still there, but there's no data in it for that reason. And if you do want to see zeros, you can just come in here. Even though I created this formula, uh, oh, I need to go back to here. Even though I created this formula through the the master formula, I can edit the formula here and remove that display zero as blank and preview that. And we should see a whole bunch of zeros then filling in. Yep. So clear as mud, right? Um, next thing I want to see. So every once in a while, when you start pulling in information from other tables, things get weird. And here, uh, best thing to show, let's finish this. So clear back first session, we started working on this instructor listing report. I'm going to edit it. Comments, yeah. Oh, I've got an advanced layout, so I need to get rid of that. Yes. Okay. So now we've got all these fields. Um, so it's put in course, instructor and course. Oh, let's preview it so you remember kind of what's going on here. Um, so we were looking at instructors and all the the course information um, for the courses they were teaching. Uh, so Arthur Alexander, uh, yeah. And it looks like we're just doing 2021 courses at this point. And we can verify that by looking at the filter. Yep, course code begins with and cancel flag is snow. So um, now one of the things here, so advanced, you've got some, some yeah, ad additional settings that you can put on here. Uh, version one report engine, that I've never really seen. Um, select only top, you can do percent of records or you can only a specific number of records. So that's your top dog. Adding distinct, uh, so if you've got some, some duplication coming in because of the different joins, um, um, you can add distinct to, to get rid of the d duplication. Um, now, if it's duplication due to something in your data set, distinct may not fix that. That's something that you need to run the catch-all or talk to your technician about fixing the actual underlying data. But um, if it is something with joins that has caused a duplication, come in here, hit yes on this distinct, and it will uh, 
you know, it, it may fix it. So uh, another thing to look at is customizing relationship. Right now, yeah, of course, yeah, we only want to display records from course that match stuff in instructor pay. Because so instructor pay is the link table in between course and instructor. So we want to make sure that that there's a one to one relationship. That's why it's saying only records. One to one relationship between course and instructor pay. Um, we don't want to include other instructor pay. Yeah, that's that's going to get weird. Um, also, instructor though, maybe we want to see our instructors that don't uh, have any courses, hence instructor pay records. So this, you may want to display records from instructor whether whether there are matches in instructor pay or not. So if I do this real quick, let me preview that. And I should have at least one come up. Arthur Alexander. Um, um, do I have Benning? Nope, nope. Where is... No, no. Um, uh oh, I screwed up my data, I think. Ah, okay. So, how did I do that? Or why did I do that? Let me just add an instructor real quick. Um, add. First name, Matthew Olson. Okay, close. He definitely does not have any registrations or any any courses. So let me close this and rerun it. And Lowry, Marshall, Miller, Moore. No, I'm definitely not showing. What did I do? Advanced. Display. Display records from instructor, whether there are matches in instructor pay or not. This just worked. Why? Of course, a lot of programmers giving webinars, um, something's not going to work right. And see, I thought there was somebody. Yeah, because Jason, Jason is an instructor. He should have showed up as my blank. He has none. Um, okay, what did I screw up? You, <laughs> you'll find it as soon as we're we're done yeah, here. <laughs> exactly. Um, but anyway, I guess the concept really is you can mess around with these relationships if you are wanting to see. Um, see data that's not necessarily linked. Um, also, it shows you in here the SQL statement that's running behind the scenes. If you are SQL savvy and you want to play with this, you can. Although once you start playing with this, then these the selected fields on the report go gray because you're manipulating it directly. So I guess beware if you're going to do that. Now, sometimes 
the joins aren't quite right. I'm just, now I'm looking at this. This so right outer join instruct. Um, so if you, sometimes people get with me asking, you know, why is this not working right? And I go in and I look here at this, and I'm like, oh, well, yeah, this join isn't pulling the right information. Usually it's one of those like registration table and things like that where it doesn't 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 always like to match up right. Um, so I might have you manipulate the select statement at that point. But that's usually you know you're you're working with me on that point. Notice on the end here the order by two one four three that's the the it's referring to the number of the field in here. So two would be IN name three, one would be IN name one, four, course, and then email is the last thing. So that's the order that it's ordering by. Yeah, kind of weird there. Uh, so anyway, this is definitely way beyond advanced. Um, and usually it's in consultation with me uh, when we're we're looking at this together and, and modifying it. But I wanted to show it just so that you're halfway familiar with it. There is, you can put in some coding into these things. I've never messed with this one, the on select code and the after run code. Um, before data, that's kind of, this would be like your uh, just do it. Um, and then the after data, that'd be like a just after. So, though really, yeah, probably never going to mess with these. The before data, I could, well, usually I would rather, you know, adjust the the select statement directly rather than adding in a, another before data, um, doing something like that. But it would be a good, like there are some some specialty things that you've got to do to get things to work right. And those like come up once in a blue moon. But um, anyway, usually that's gonna be talk with me, um, and I may have things for you to, to put in here to do this sort of stuff. Really, if you're you know playing with the report wizard and you need to go into advanced, most of the time it's going to be either the, because of the distinct, you're wanting to select top, or do something with the relationship in in getting it to show other records and so yeah that's what i want to hit on with advanced any questions there or have i totally lost everybody oh well lots of information there matthew <laughs> people are going to have yeah. to absorb that a little bit like i said get with me i can help you out with that stuff so oh, very good so I think I want to wrap things up. We are, well, okay, I'm five minutes short. Uh, I personally think that this report wizard is easier and more powerful as far as reporting than student manager. Um, yeah, there's just so much you can do with it and so much you, you just got to play with it really to figure it out and, and get it to do uh, some things, but yeah, get with me if you're you're looking for certain things. If you want any of the examples I have done in in this report wizard, I've kept them all, so I can export them and send them to you, and you can import them into your system. Um, if you don't have the report wizard, test drive it for 90 days. Get these reports from me. Um, yeah, I can. Uh, uh, yeah, have fun with it. Um, 
fill out your evaluation. I don't know. Are we sending out an evaluation, Sharon? They have a few questions to answer as they close out today that they can respond and give us some feedback. So we appreciate that. And Matthew, I, I think you, I can't say it better than you about giving this a test drive and we can help you set that up so you can have some hands-on practice with this. We have another webinar this month, and this is going to be on managing discounts in Student Manager and ASWIB, using those discounts to get more registrations in your courses, coupon codes, the new uh, partner enrollment package, and more. So we hope you can join us on the 23rd as well. Um, with that, Matthew, let's let them get on with their day. We appreciate you joining us. And Matthew, again, thank you for putting this series together for us. And have a good afternoon, everyone, and we hope to see you later this month. Bye, all. Bye, all. It's been fun.